This SUV has everything that a van life Sprinter has, except the high roof. And if you wanna know how I fit all of this in here, you need to watch this video. My name is Arslan and I've been living in vehicles for the past few years. I started this lifestyle after calculating how much money I could have saved by not paying rent. So far, I built and lived in a van, a sports car, and an SUV, while also working in healthcare, traveling the country, and putting myself through nursing school. Right now, I'm a registered nurse living out of a 2014 Chevy Suburban. You wanna see how I do it? It's starting to drizzle a little bit, so I'm gonna get inside the car and give you guys a full tour. This right here is the main entrance. First thing we see is a hallway that's wide enough to fit me comfortably. The cool thing about this fridge is that there's two compartments and I can choose which one of these want them to be on or off. So as you can see, I only have the right side on. It's set for 36 degrees and then I got my food right in here. And it also has LEDs, so that's perfect so I can see what I'm getting, especially at night time. Everything in here is built on top of three quarter inch plywood with hardwood flooring. As you can see, the flooring from the back side extends up to here. There's a difference in elevation between the back floor and then this floor. So I'm using this little area for storage and there's also wires underneath all of that. In this hallway, on the right side, there's my monitoring system. I have my temperature monitor. It's about 75 degrees right now. And then my battery monitor is here. I can tell how much capacity I have and if I'm charging or not charging. Also, there's a switch to control my inverter. But to be honest with you, my inverter never shuts off. See, right now I'm getting about 2.8 amps. Um, that's kind of understandable because it is, you know, cloudy. It's raining a little bit. And then I can also see how many amp hour I have in my battery. Right now I'm at 397 out of 400 amp hour. This red seat that I'm sitting on right now is the best thing I could come up with for this little area. This is where I do my cooking, obviously. And you know, the seat doesn't move because there's a rubber mesh underneath it. And the same rubber mesh I have underneath this fridge. That way, you know, it's supported when I'm driving. It's not moving back and forth. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this countertop. It's basically this project board attached on top of a wall cabinet. This cabinet is about 20 inches high. It's not your regular household or van life cabinets. They're very short. That's why it can fit in this space. There's three doors inside and each of them have a child safety lock. That way when I'm driving, you know, it's not gonna open up and just things fly everywhere. I have so much in these three cabinets and let me actually just take everything out and show you on the table what's inside. All of this came out of the middle compartment. There's actually more in the left compartment. On the actual countertop, we have a fan that's powered through a USB through the backside. There's a USB charging station behind this countertop. And then we also have a USB powered uh, water pump. Also a USB powered liquid dish soap dispenser. This mirror is perfect, you know, I can sit down here, see my face and groom myself in the morning. We have an AC powered LED lamp. This one also does RGB colors. Over here we have a standard basic uh, propane stove. There's a hose connecting from here, from the back. It's getting propane from a little jar that's inside this cabinet actually. And just to reiterate my water system, if you're new here, we got a two and a half gallon tank. There's a small tube connecting into this device right here. And the water goes in through that, into this black tubing and into this one and a half gallon tank. We're kind of done with the kitchen, but there's also additional storage. When I removed the front passenger seat, it allowed me to put this long cabinet, but then I ended up with some extra storage that's about this much space, you know? And I figured, let me utilize that area. So let me show you exactly what I put in there. I have this uh, wood board that I attach on hinges and uh, there's my paper towel dispenser. It goes like that and then I can access what's behind here. And the main thing that I use the most is my gym bag. Inside here is everything I need when I go to the gym, shower or whatever. Let me take that out. And then inside here I have my tool bag. There's everything I need to do any work on this car. And then we also have our window covers. This is for the front and my window covers for the front passenger side windows. 
and it basically fits like a glove in here. Okay, so back to this little area right here. I do have my fire extinguisher and I also have my big batteries. These babies are 200 amp hour each, giving me a total of 400 amp hour. And for this size vehicle, I think it's overkill, but I, I always like to go a little above and beyond to be, you know, feeling safe and comfortable. So I moved these batteries here in hopes of, you know, reducing EMF. Although I read online, there's articles saying that the batteries themselves don't really emit the EMF. It's the electrical components they are connected to. So that means like the inverter and then there's the charge controller. So if you have knowledge on this, please drop a comment. Let me know what's going on. And the second reason I put them here, I thought it was perfect, is because they're right underneath the AC vents. Batteries have operating temperatures. Let's say if I'm in a too hot or too cold of a weather, for example, I'm in Colorado, it's negative something. These batteries are not gonna operate. They're not gonna charge, they're not gonna discharge. What I would do is turn on the car, let the heat run, and boom, all of that is gonna get warmed up real quick and then I can use my batteries. So that's basically why I put them right in here. We finished the front half portion of the vehicle. Now let's go to the back. Okay, so this has to be my favorite part of the entire build. I got the seat facing the back. This is where I do my eating. This is where I do my editing for YouTube. And the best part is that I can just open up that rear trunk lid and see what's out there, whether it's a lake or a mountain or a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> but anyways, so everything here is DIY, just two pieces of wood. It's basically like a drawer slide. And um, <clears throat> I put my laptop here. Actually, let's, instead of saying how I do it, let me just show you. And if you're wondering where I'm gonna put this, you know I'm gonna put it, right? I have a AC outlet right in here behind my chair. So just like that, we are charging. And virtually, as long as I'm getting some sun during the day to charge my batteries, I can run this forever. It really feels good. And that's why I went heavy on the batteries. So what else do I have in this desk area? I kept it simple. I have this uh, LED RGB uh, light changing uh, lamp. And I also have this Alexa. Alexa, what's the temperature today? Right now, it's 62 degrees Fahrenheit. And features like this, I like a lot because I like the idea of a smart home. And we have this 12 volt light. I actually have a bunch of them. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven of these in the car. You know, they do a great job of lighting up this space. And there's this uh, Govi LED rope. If you're not familiar with it, it's uh, pretty cool. Okay, now let's do the other side of this camper. The only time I have to be slouched like this is when I'm getting something from my new storage area, which is right here. Basically, there was this wasted space on both of the rear sides of the vehicle. As you can see from here, it's identical on both sides. There's this little space and then it goes up and all of that is wasted. So I figured, let me do something with it. So I put a plywood painted black and then behind it is just all storage. There's so much stuff in there. The laptop, there's my nursing bag, my first aid bag, my drone, my bed sheet, jump starter, my electric blanket, and there's a few miscellaneous items as well. I guess we can talk about this bed. It's just a three inch mattress, but I'm not feeling the hardwood that's underneath it. The bed design is two by six feet and that's perfect for me because I'm six feet tall and I'm not complaining. This is my electrical system. Let me just start off by saying it's DIY. <laughs> it's not pretty, but everything in here works. I got my solar 60 amp charge controller. In the back, I got my electrical circuits. And over here underneath these wires is my 2000 watt Renogy inverter. And now we're moving on to the back section of this bed. We have a lot of miscellaneous items, but it's mostly my clothing. All of this is my clothing. It extends to the back and you know, I tend to store things like this. That way it's easy to grab. And I find it that, you know, it's, I can fit a lot more stuff. My protein shakes are in here. I have a steamer for my clothing. I basically have about uh, eight or 10 pairs of every item of clothing. That way I would need to do laundry, you know, once a week. That's everything in my bed. Last thing behind back here, we have my toilet. It's a cassette toilet, self-explanatory. 
You can open it, close it, halfway open, halfway closed, fully closed. I just wanted to show you the camper from the outside. Everything from the rear is all limo tent. Even at nighttime when I have all my lights on, there's the window cover, so nothing sees through. And then my front windows are about 20% um, tint, but the window cover is painted black. And now look at the comparison. They look almost identical. You can't see a thing. Guys, I do want to make some coffee and there's something we need to talk about. Here's my criteria for deciding which car is best. I can take this SUV into any big city and work at the biggest hospitals downtown where the parking is usually a garage building, where there's a roof clearance. A Sprinter is not gonna fit there. A Camaro would fit in the garage building, but I wouldn't have all this room in this SUV. Get paid these high salaries that are downtown in the busy city areas. Basically, I'll be living out of that garage building on the days that I'm working. And then because I don't have to pay these crazy rent prices in the big cities, I save that money. And I'm making the most money. So it's all about numbers, you know? I know it's a weird criteria, but that's my thinking. What did you think of this camper? Did it inspire you? Do you have any advice to make this camper better? Leave a comment, let me know. I'll try to get back to you. I'll see you next time. Okay, the video is over. I don't know if you're waiting here. It's, it's done. I'm telling you, it's done. The video finished. You can click next or choose any, any of the other videos on the bottom or to the right side. But you know, I finished recording. I'm done for the day. I just wanna, I just wanna have my coffee. Okay. There's nothing to see. I don't know. I don't know why you're still here. There's just nothing to see. It's just me, a guy holding a cup in a car. I finished. That's it. The video is over. Now you can go. I I just, I don't know what's going through your head. There's, oh. I just wanna have me time. Okay, I just want to do my thing. Can I do my thing? Bye guys.